Inventory went down last week, and it's about to jump this week. It's the yearly trend that we see every single Memorial Day weekend. In this video, we're going to go over the single-family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update. With the debt ceiling being hopefully almost settled, there's some really great news on this front. And let's talk about the U.S. housing price showing the first annual decline since 2012. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed to Manchester by the sea to take a look at a stunning home that's nearly 10,000 square square feet of newly constructed space. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. The stats this week are go to look bad, and that's okay because it was Memorial Day weekend. New listings and pendings are always going to take a nosedive this week. Now, it's the unofficial start of summer, and people tend to want to, well, enjoy themselves this week. And be on the lookout in the beginning of June for the market report because I have been pulling together some preliminary data, and there are some really great trends that we need to look at and discuss, and maybe even one bad trend. But now, let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,398 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now, inventory went down, but we knew that was going to happen. Expect some big inventory growth this week as people rush to put their house on the market before Memorial Day weekend, and now the people that waited to put their house on the market after Labor Day weekend, well, here they come. Nothing to fear and nothing to really cautiously read into. For the last three weeks, we've had inventory levels below the previous year, and this week is continued with us currently having 148 fewer houses to look at. Now, this number did decrease a bit from last week's level of 235 fewer homes, but I expect this to get worse when you look at it from a year-over-year perspective, and that's worse from the buyer perspective. Sellers love it, of course. Sellers were rushing to get their houses on the market this time last year because of the very quickly climbing interest rates. I don't think we will see the surge in inventory growth that we saw this time last year. Complete guessment or, well, prediction, but I don't see us going over 5,000 units this summer like we did last year. And by the way, if that is the case, then it is setting up buyers for a very painful fall with very li limited amount of inventory to look at. We had 692 houses come on the market this week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 1,205 units, but we knew we were going to be way under this week, and well, there you go. I think a better number to look at is the number of new listings this week last year and compare the two, which was 894 single-family homes that came on the market. Now, this means that new listings were off by 22.6% from last year's numbers. Now, pendings were strong, and this makes sense because those pending numbers were actually the numbers from last week's activity. In other words, the amount of houses that went under agreement in next week's report is going to look, well, a little weak. But that is what is to be ex completely expected. We had 1,091 single-family homes to sell last week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 1,061 units, so we were a little higher. We were 20.5% off of last year's numbers, however, when 1,373 units went under agreement. So new listings were off by 22%, and under agreements were down by 20% when compared to last year's numbers. And that is even with the off week due to Memorial Day weekend. Now, there were 569 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $808,000 and that median sales price of $619,000. And months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a strong seller's market with the close the closer to zero that you get, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually fell pretty sharply to 1.71 months of inventory compared to last week's 1.95 months. Now, this continues to indicate that it is a strong market for sellers, but has been actually getting a little stronger. And that might just be because of the decrease in the amount of inventory. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto that condo market. We have 2,120. 28 condos on the market as of Monday. Just like the single family market, inventory dropped in the condo market, which was all part of the plan. Last week, inventory dropped below last year's levels. This week, it played a little hip scotch with the line, and we now have more inventory on the market today than we did today last year. It's a whopping five houses more. So for all intents and purposes, let's just consider it even. Inventory is even with last year's levels in this specific condo market. Now, there were 267 condos that came on the market this week. The four-week rolling average is 555 units. So this level is, well, below average. But again, that was to be expected. The better inventory indicator is to compare it to the same week last year when 311 condos came on the market. This means that new inventory currently hitting the market was only behind by 14% when compared to last year's levels. 
We had 432 condos go under agreement this week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 507 units. So we did take a pretty aggressive step backwards here. When compared to last year, we were 19.3% off of last year's levels when 535 condos went under agreement. This was very interesting and something that I don't have an opinion on yet. There's just not enough data. So inventory was down by 14% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 19%. There were 296 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $743,000 and that median sales price of $560,000. Months of inventory had a sharp fall as well to 2.15 months from last week's 2.4 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. Interest rates. In the last month, they've moved up by more than a half percent. But here is something that I noticed and thought was really interesting. There wasn't as much swarming as there has been in the past when interest rates shot up. It's almost like home buyers have, well, gotten used to uh, the new normal. Yeah, that's it. As we've talked about, one of the reasons that interest rates have been increasing is due to the debt ceiling and our dependents. I mean, politicians not being able to come to a deal. Well, a deal was struck and interest rates, well, they've started to come down. So that's the really great news. Where they settled, that's the next million dollar question. We did the math last week on why interest rates going down too far would not be a good thing. So I'm not going to bore you there, but I personally don't expect them to settle in a range that is just crazy low. I'm thinking in the low to mid 6% range. So now that the X factor, that is the debt limit is well, hopefully out of the way, we can focus on more important things like home price declines, huh. national home price declines. Remember, this is as dumb as talking about the national average for the temperature today. But people, they're obsessed with it. So let's talk about it. The Case-Shiller Composite Index is considered as the best analysis for home price data. It is a 20-city composite with home price declining year over year for the first time since May 2012. Now, the big winners were Miami, Tampa, and Charlotte, who reported their highest year-over-year -year gains among the 20 cities surveyed, while San Francisco was down a whopping 11.2%. Seattle was actually worse than San Francisco, but other cities that saw some red were San Diego, Las Vegas, Portland, Phoenix, Denver, LA, and Dallas. Wow, this actually just turned into a phenomenal phenomenal segue to talk about some upcoming videos which should be coming out next week. I did a year-over-year -year analysis for the first five and a half months of 2022 and compared them to 2023. We're going to go over the winners and some shocking losers, so be on the lookout as we're also putting together a guide with all of the towns and all of the data. And now on to the luxury home of the week, which is a newly constructed single-family home in Manchester by the sea. Now, this is a six-bedroom, seven-pool, and one-half-bath home that spans 9,600 square feet while being nestled on over two acres. They call this home Harbor Head, as it towers over Manchester Harbor, offering its residents and guests sweeping views stretching from Manchester Center across the water to Peaches Point. It is a truly majestic spot. Southwestern light reflects off the harbor and illuminates the sensational one-of-a-kind waterfront home with waterfront views from nearly every room. Attention to detail and fine craftsmanship can be found throughout this entirely elegant home. High ceiling height, gleaming hardwood floors throughout in a high-end kitchen and inlay cabinets and high-end appliances. I mean, upstairs you're going to find a huge master suite with a bathroom that's just fit for a spa, plus four other additional large, large bedrooms. Don't miss the additional in-law suite that is above the three-car attached garage. And if you ended up not feeling the gorgeous stairway was your jam, then don't worry as there's a three-level elevator. This opportunity is being marketed with an asking price of $13,750,000. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week, well, just for fun. My specialty and, quite frankly, my love... Helping the normal guy, not the gal buying the $14 million waterfront estate. And when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide that same service that that $14 million mansion folk gets, but for us non $100,000 plus tax paying folks, right? Now, every person's home, well, that's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your information, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Truly, whatever is easiest and works best for you. I personally, I love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.